It's good, good to see a smile a little bit there. <laughs> um, hey, uh, I know I asked you about the rotation. I was wanting to go a little deeper there for something I'm working on. You know, you, you look at these eight guys and probably at, at the LSU game, se several of them weren't in the rotation for various reasons. Um, what have you thought about how this group has come together? And and like you say, you're playing your best ball. Nate, Nate Oates said that too, that you guys are playing their best ball. What is it about this group that's that's working and, and you know, a month ago or whatever, could you imagine this this would be the, the core group you're going with down the stretch? No, I mean, I think one, the, the it's a, it's a group that's, uh, con you know, continued to work. Mo uh, you know, I, I think the other thing is just the health, um, you know, like KB dealt with some different things. He's still dealing with, with an Achilles, um, you know, obviously TB has been, um, you know, hurt throughout different times of, of, of the season. And, um, you know, it's just kind of a group that, when we've tried to add everything up, meaning practice and, and uh, you know, games and uh, the different vehicles that we use from a statistical analysis, it's it's just been the, you know, kind of the group that that we've settled on down the stretch here. But, you know, guys that aren't in the rotation obviously have to stay ready, um, you know, especially uh, in a tournament type setting. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, how it's evolved is probably a, a whole bunch of different things, um, you know, put together, Bob. I don't think it was just one particular thing. I, you know, we've been trying to find um, a group that complements each other as well. So there's, so there's all those different factors, really. Well, why do you think it's working with these guys? Um, I, you know, I think it's a good, you know, the combination together is good. You know, it started... You know, I think it was even the Mississippi State road game. Devo was playing the four at that spot, you know, at, at that time. So it's it hasn't just been this this group. I mean, it has been, you know, for the last couple of games. But, um, you know, it's it's they complement each other. I think that's one thing. Um, I don't know. I I'm trying to contribute to your story, Bob. I, I, I appreciate that. I don't want to make anything up. Um, and, and, you know, when I say the group, I don't mean just the stars. I mean, you know, the eight guys that, that you're, and, and I think you had 16 uh, st different starting combinations. I know, you know, like nobody likes doing that. Right. But how good is it? Or how good do you feel that you've been able to finally settle on a group and do it the way you've always done it? Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I think the team has played confident. I mean, the, I, th I think our last three road games on weekends were Mississippi State, Kentucky, and and uh, Alabama. Those are three hard places to play. All you'd have to do is look at their home record. Um, if you if you add those, and you know we didn't win them, but we gave ourselves or we 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 had an opportunity um, to win all three of those games, and and um, you know so I I think that it's a confident or a more confident team than we were earlier. Um, and I do think that, you know, this particular group knows where shots are coming from and who they're coming from. And, um, you know. I wanted to ask something about Davenport, too, if I could kind of follow up what you said the other day. I was reading, this might have been, this might have been a Scotty story from his uh, long lost whole hog days. But well, Wes Miller had a quote, I think, in the Cincinnati Inquirer, just uh, praising Davenport and how much he loves coaching them, kind of similar to what you said I don't know how many guys you'd have two coaches say that about. What is it about Jeremiah um, that makes guys like you and Wes Miller love love, love coaching him? Uh, just super high energy, you know, competitive, uh, plays with emotion, practices with emotion, um, good teammate, um, you know, can can accept different roles. Um, you know, he's – he's uh, you know, he's just, he's got a, he's got a, um, a positivity about himself. Uh, he's great on the bench when he's not in games, uh, brings energy to his, to his teammates. Um, so I would say those qualities, um, you know, willing to, to take on any defensive assignment, regardless of position. And I know you brought him in to be a shooter and he's hit some shots, but he was rebounding real well. And I think there was a game earlier this year where he scored real well in the first half, but then you didn't play him because he didn't have a rebound in the first half. He's really rebounding well. You know, he passed, had a lot of assists. He seems like he's 
doing more than just shooting. What what do you thought about his all around contributions? Yeah, I mean, I think that's you know that's that's why you know we're playing better. He's playing better. Is is there is a more um, you know across the board? He's I mean, he even had um, you know for a shooter, he had a high quality assist numbers the other night as well. So um, he's doing a little bit of everything, which which is you know what you want out of those guys that are six five to six seven. You want those swing guys to be able to you know, to, to, to impact the box score, uh, in more than one way. And, and, uh, you know, he's starting to do that with the rebounding, the passing, um, he made a, a great dribble drive move the other night, um, in Tuscaloosa. So, um, and again, you, you kind of look at the, the history of our guys that play the three, four, and those guys have been players that can do a lot of different things. The Adis Tonys and, and uh, the Stan Amudes and and uh, Jordan Walsh's those guys have been, you know, it's been important for us for those guys to do multiple things while they're on the floor. And um, you know, JD is slightly um, undersized uh, uh, compared to those other guys, but he is the closest thing to those other guys as far as a multi-positional uh, guy that that can kind of play three different positions for us. Yeah, I might have a couple more. I'll, I'll turn back to Kyle if time allows. Thanks. Curtis. Coach, you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier there, but I guess you've kind of settled in on your rotation, but in a tournament setting like this, if you if you get to the later rounds, you might need more than that. So what, what's the added benefit of having guys like a blocker, a Keon, a JG, who might not be in the rotation right now, but they've they've contributed for you in SEC play this year? Yeah, I mean, I th you know, the, the only thing, Curtis, we're really worried about is how to, you know, obviously how to beat Vanderbilt. Um, you know, so, you know, as you look beyond that, I mean, I don't think that that any of the players can, and I don't think that the coaching staff can, but I will say that um, for any teams that advance, um, you know, depth can, the, the further you advance, depth can become more of a more, uh, you know, of a, of a factor. And certainly guys like Layden Blocker. I mean, Layden has practiced really hard, um, you know, and and he I know like, you know, Layden Blocker staying ready to play. Um, and that's what you need to do. You know, if you're not getting the reps uh, in a game, you know, it's important to stay mentally focused and and uh, and get the reps and, and work on your cardiovascular. And I do think we have some guys that, um, <clears throat> you know, first one. In the building, those guys, you know, that are doing that type of stuff, they're staying, staying ready to play. And and um, like I said, you know, if you're fortunate, any team that's fortunate enough to to advance, um, you know, rotations can can alter uh, with each extra game that you have to play. Scotty. Yeah, Eric, I wanted to ask you about Makai. Um, just how, how valuable has his progression been over the last month plus? I guess just in terms of giving the front line some stability with with guys in and out of the lineup. Yeah, Makai's been great. Uh, pick and roll. Um, you know, we're playing through him. You know, he's done a great job of of rolling. He also understands when to short roll against different defenses and and um you know, he's, I mean, he's, he's played really, really good uh, basketball. Um, you know, you look at his last 10 game segment, um, you know, we need him to play better than, 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 than the Vandy game. Cause other than that game, he's, he's played at a high, high level. Um, and so we just need him to continue to do what he's been doing to continue to play like he did against uh, Alabama. And some of these games of late, he's, he's, he's really played, um, fantastic on both ends of the floor for us. And then on, on Califf, um looked at his numbers, at least one steal in the last six games, four blocks in the last two. Has, has anything in particular stood out to you defensively with him, um, you know, maybe from early in the year until now? Yeah, I think he's just way more um, comfortable in our system right now. I think he understands the terminology. I think he understands um, – you know, where he's supposed to be on the weak side defensively. And and then I think his on-ball awareness has become uh, more aggressive as well. So I think all those factors, um, you know, would, would be why I think we're seeing uh, defensive numbers increase with, with KB. Hutch. 
Yeah, Eric, you've mentioned several times that y'all played really well down the stretch, except for maybe an eight-minute stretch against Vandy, and you got those guys coming up. Do you look back at that stretch and kind of watch the film with the team and try to make specific uh, corrections based on that, or is that kind of been completely flushed? No, no, I think it's I think it's extremely important as you as you play a team uh, multiple times that you look and review uh, things that you did well and things that you didn't do well and. Um, certainly Jerry Stackhouse, you know, he's, 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 they run great stuff. Um, they'll change up their defenses. Um, you know, they have three players that are playing at a high level and coach Stackhouse does a great job of getting, um, you know, man, John and, and T Lawrence and, and Lubin inside, he, you know, he gets those three guys, the basketball and, um, and then they have other guys that are surrounding those three that can make threes. Uh, but certainly, Hutch, we've we've gone back and and today will be another day where where we'll show video of of uh, of the last game. We'll also show uh, some video and discuss some of the things that Vanderbilt did against Florida in their in their last win. Um, so yeah, I think you you look at you look at our past game um, that carries a lot of weight in in uh, adjustments and then. And then certainly uh, their most recent games become part of part of uh, evaluation, adjustments, and and game planning. And I know this season hasn't gone the way y'all had hoped, but you know the All SEC teams came out today, and uh, T Mark wasn't one of the seventeen guys on either team. Were you a little bit surprised, considering as good as he's been for y'all, that maybe he wasn't at least a a second team guy or anything? Yeah, Hutch, I came straight from lunch, um, had some Sam at Tzatziki's. And um, walked in here and Kyle put me uh, in front of uh, you guys. So I don't know what time that came out. Um, so I, I don't have a comment unless I had some time to digest it. But um, I don't know who the other names are. So I guess it would not be, uh, it'd be inappropriate for me to, to comment. Certainly feel like T-Mark has had a great, great season um, and has been productive throughout the SEC season as well. So Unless I had time to study that list, it would be I'd be ill informed. Other than to say that I think T. Mark has has had a great season. Jackson, hey Moss, uh, Lubin, I know he he did a really good job on the offensive glass against you guys, but he also got some some easy easy baskets. Uh, what's the key maybe to to making life a little more difficult for him? Does it start with the guards that they've got? Well, I think a couple things, um, you know, I, I, I think, Jackson, when you look at um, – so Florida is one of the biggest teams in the SEC. And um, you look at the offensive rebounding numbers in Vanderbilt's last game, that's a lot of offensive rebounds they got as a team against what I consider uh, as good a rebounding team, um, you know, maybe in our league. So, But Lubin, he did a great job uh, reacting – uh, to rebounds, um, you know, if uh, if Manjon and 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 Lawrence uh, get into the teeth of the defense and 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 are able to give dump off passes, um, and your bigs uh, help, uh, certainly that 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 creates issues. We've got to have better smashes, was what we call it on the weak side. And um, yeah, he he played a great game against us. He's a really good player that. In my opinion, he's, you know, he's a hard cover. He made a couple threes uh, against the Gators. So that opens up a little bit more of his game um, as well. So, um, you know, like I said, they have three in what our, our opinion or the way that we are deeming them is they have, you know, three stars and, and you've got to try to contain those guys. And, and then you've got to understand uh, the other guys in their rotation and and their strengths and and try to take away somewhat of their strengths. And, um, you know, a lot of their other guys that we haven't mentioned are, are three point uh, shooters uh, and high three point attempt players. So um, that's kind of how we're formulating the game plan, but certainly um, the effectiveness um, that they had at that five spot uh, in the first meeting, we've, we've got to improve uh, and that's everybody's responsibility um, you know, from the coaches to uh, all five players on the floor. Last one, Anthony. Hey, Eric, hope you're doing well. Uh, obviously, I know all the focus is on Vanderbilt at the moment, but I just wanted to ask you a little bit about recruiting, especially with some guys entering the portal at this point. Is that something you look at 
or how much do you look at it at the stuff like that with that's at this stage of the season? Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at it. Um, I mean, we've made phone calls and, and, um, you know, uh, if it requires video evaluation, uh, there's not a lot in the portal. There, there might be, um, stuff that's on, um, social media that says, you know, a guy's going in, but until a guy actually shows up in the portal, uh, in the NCAA, uh, database, um, you know, and, and, uh, so there are not a lot, uh, but there's a couple guys that, that, um, names that are, that'll pop up in there and, and we'll evaluate and do what we can and recruit, uh, the minute, uh, after we evaluate, you know, then it, then it, you know, gets to a matter of, of, you know, are you going to make phone calls or not? And <clears throat> look, before lead eight games, we've been doing zooms. I've, I've said that in the past. Um, so certainly if you're playing for an elite eight, uh, and an opportunity to make a final four and you're doing zooms, then certainly, uh, we're going to be working, working to the best of our ability right now, um, as well as preparing, which is the most important thing is to prepare for Vanderbilt that, that takes, um, you know, that's the front seat and then the back seat, um, uh, would, would be, um, you know, recruiting and working the portal as, as names pop up in there. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, you guys.